Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for being here. Today we have Vincent, the founder of Ghost Market. And of course, we're going to be talking about the uh, the ongoing Hashoshi uh, NFT challenge. We're going to announce the winners and mint those live here in this episode. But we're also going to talk about Ghost Market and NFT world and Phantasma. So Vincent, thanks for being here, man. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So as some of you may know, um, I'm first of all, a big fan of Phantasma, a big fan of Ghost Market and NFTs. So this was a match made in heaven. Um, we've been running this uh, this competition where artists can submit uh, Hashoshi themed NFTs or really just art in general that they're, that they're making. And so we've been going through the process of judging and wanted to announce in this video, uh, the two major winners. So we'll announce the, the grand prize winner and then the runner up. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so I want to go ahead and, and mention the runner up. And this was a really challenging, challenging thing to pick. Um, and I'll overlay the art here. But the, the runner up winner is uh, by Vict Art. And that's on Twitter at Vict Art X. Uh, this steampunk version of me is insanely cool. Uh, definitely, definitely a fantastic piece. Uh, so big, big thank you and big congratulations. Uh, to you, but the the grand prize winner, the number one pick, and again, very challenging to make this pick, but uh, fantastic piece of art um, by Hadley four one seven on Twitter, or you know Hadley four is the name, and so this beautiful uh, piece of art with me grasping the uh, the phantasma ghost, just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So, uh, Vincent, let's let's go ahead and do the honors and and mint these these bad boys. Oh. Can you see my screen? I can see it. Okay. Um, so I can go over quickly the process, but it's um, very straightforward, I say. We try to make this very simple. So let's do this. I think, let's yep. start. So this is the second. That's the runner up, yep. Second place, okay. So you'll have to guide me what you want to put, uh, name, description, and stuff. I, I usually don't do this. <laughs> I provide yeah. the, to do it. <laughs> yeah, you can do uh, Hashoshi Steampunk. Like this. Looks great, yep. And then description, we could do the same thing. You could say, uh, you know, runner up in the Phantasma. NFT art contest. Okay. Um, so this is art. Uh, I think we said maybe 100 should be fine. That should be great. So basically here you have to define a max supply for the series and mm -hmm. how many I want to mint right now. Um, do we need, let's see, order. we'll add the original order here. Um, can you remind me the Twitter yeah. and your name? V-I-C-T-A-R-T-E-X. Is this? Big Dart X, yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. And Beautiful. that's it. I just had to, to grab my key. Uh, it's it's loading, it should take 30 seconds before it's minted. Perfect. Let's do the other one. Great. This video is proof of mint, right? We're sure it's yeah, yeah. Irrefutable. <laughs> so, what did we say for this one? What do you want to call it? Uh, let's uh, let's shout out to the original creator Hadley, and they called it Space Holder. So this is the first one we did. It's already minted. I picked a random one, number mm -hmm. eight. Beautiful. 
it's it's live already. It's in my wallet. If I go to my account. Oh, it's it might be still loading. Uh, image. This is a new one. It's called, I have a ton of NFT. Okay. Yep. This is it. One. It, it's individually because those are all unique NFT. So on your account page, it shows them all edition 28, 27, 26. That makes sense. Yep. And so Love it. should be coming. Here it is. Yeah. And there you have it. <laughs> the winners of uh, the NFT art contest are, are minted. And of course, folks will be in, in touch with, uh, with the winnings for, for the winning party. So congratulations and thanks again to everyone who submitted art to this, uh, this Phantasma NFT art contest. Uh, and Vincent, thank you to you for, for minting these and showing folks how to mint uh, live on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to help. <laughs> perfect, perfect. So, I mean, I guess now we can, we can pivot to just, you know, talking, you know, more generally about, about Phantasma, about Ghost Market, uh, NFTs and maybe your own, you know, your own expertise, uh, sure. if you'd be, be happy to do that. Yeah. Um, so j just uh, as an introduction, I'm a full-time blockchain engineer since about one and a half year. I used to be a network architect, but I uh, transitioned into blockchain full-time because this is what I love doing. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm very, very involved in uh, Phantasma. I'm a Phantasma core developer since uh, 18 months, about, about the same time I started um, blockchain full-time um, and since two years at least I'm uh, uh, obsessed with NFT <laughs> as in, I, I love both investing and uh, designing the technology behind NFT so what I started doing about a bit more than one year ago is uh, starting a very simple marketplace which was custom made for one particular game on Phantasma Mm -hmm. It worked very well, but it was very limited. It was not uh, something made to scale or whatnot. And during that time, I realized that uh, NFT would have to explode. You know, it was more than one year ago, but I knew it. <laughs> so we right. started building a team. We are a team of four people, and we, we basically started Ghost Market from scratch um, with the idea being that it would be a, a cross-chain, cross-project NFT marketplace which has a lot of implication. It, it might not be something you see right away when you're on your website, but our entire infrastructure and back end mm -hmm. is completely generic. We, mm -hmm. we can plug any blockchain very easily. For now, we haven't because we have some stuff to focus, but we are actually in the process of expanding the team and it's growing exponentially. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe even a couple of years ago, people were saying, oh, I, you know, NFTs are, are going to be the future, right? And there are many people who are fans of it. And I think it's difficult for people to, to grasp, pun intended, the fact that you're buying something that is intangible, right? That you can't hold in your hand. And yeah, it's a new concept. Yeah, it's, it's very new. But I think that one of the big things that's making a difference is services like, like Ghost Market, right? That make it really easy for someone to actually get into this space as a, as a buyer or as a, a minter or an artist, someone who's creating these collectibles. Where do you see the space going in the next couple of years? I know it's feverish right now. I, I think we will find out tons of new use cases. Uh, up to six months ago, it was only um, gaming stuff, like mm -hmm. most of the stuff you saw, except collectible, but it was purely uh, assets in game, uh, which were uh, basically ownable and tradable through NFT ownership, which was great, right. and still is. And then we had a new trend with uh, NFT art since about, I don't know, one year to six months ish, um, a lot of stuff started coming out uh, NFT art related and with the culmination being as uh, sale from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy, 60, 60, 70 million, you know. And since about one month, I think it changed again. The trend is no music NFT. It's, great. it's getting crazy. I'm personally uh, getting contacted by dozens of musicians and not specifically small ones every single day. And everyone has heard about music. You know, they all want to be involved, whether it's for good reason or bad reason. But my point is, 
everyone knows about it and it's just starting up. And I think it's just like three use cases and there are plenty, plenty more. So uh, there's, it's almost impossible it goes away, you know? We we'll always find new use cases. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, you know, looking at, you know, gaming, that's obviously a huge vertical. You look at art, that's a huge vertical, music. But, you know, but I think even things that we interact with in our everyday lives, you know, uh, you know, um, I think to an extent, pieces of our identities, right? Attestations of credentials that one might have and collect throughout their lifetime could be, you know, in an NFT construct. So um, I think I completely agree with you. We're moving in that direction increase at an increasingly rapid rate, given the adoption of the, the different pieces of technology behind it. Yeah, and um, with the uh, main blockchain going mainstream or at least growing a lot, it also helps, obviously, because before, not only you had to understand blockchain, but also NFT, you know, <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit too much for Mr. Everybody. And now yeah. that people start to know, okay, blockchain is here and it stays. What about, what's this new tech? What's NFT? So we're getting a lot of traction. So I have a question and in this, I think you, you may have even alluded to your answer in your, you know, sort of the origin story of, of ghost market. But one of the challenges that I see for the NFT space at large is the fragmentation of protocol, right? The fact that right now, Ethereum, which is still a big player in NFTs, you know, the biggest player, arguably, and then you have some of the layer two solutions that are starting to come out. You have Phantasma and others they're all very disjointed. They're all separate. And so you start to see like crypto punks being replicated on Binance smart chain. Like, do you see that being a challenge in the future too? Yes, it, it, technically it's, it's a challenge because if you're a dApp and instead of having to deploy your project on one chain, no, you have to deploy it on four or five, six, mm -hmm. six chain. Just if you want to reach a wider audience, that's, that's how it is. So that's first, it's more complex. Designing one smart contract is not the same as designing five or more smart contracts. Yeah. Um, as to user, it can be confusing too, because then you have to explain, okay, what's an NFT? But then you also have to explain, you have an NFT, but you know, currently your NFT is only on this chain, so you're limited. So yes, it brings limitation, but uh, NFT is um, the same way blockchain um, is evolving. It, it all, it's all going to be about interoperability since 2020 yeah. and this year even more. Everything, including NFT, uh, are about to explode when it comes to chain interoperability. Um, for now, there are none or very limited solution to, to, to swap NFT between blockchain. Uh, we're at Fantasma, we're working on our own solution. It's close to ready. I know other solutions are doing this. It's very challenging and it doesn't solve the fact that um, you have other consideration like metadata and search. It's, it's very complex to handle that on multiple chain, but there are solutions available is what I'm saying. And I think the trend is that if a project wants to survive and evolve, it has to be portable, you know? It, it's it's yeah. too, too limited to, to say, okay, ETH is a big one. I just want to have an NFT project on ETH. If, if that's not the way to go. And same thing for um, smaller solutions. You can't just be on, let's say, Fantasma. You also have to be compatible or interoperable with Ethereum. As I, at least for me, that's how it should be. Yeah, I agree with you. And it's, I, I think that the space is sort of in, stuck in this, you know, middle ground between we had very nascent, you know, very nascent technology, nascent ideas. Now we're starting to mature, but the tech's not all the way there to get us to that final point. So people are starting to argue about you know, this is the protocol, whereas the argument should be, what can all of these different protocols be doing to kind of interoperate with each other and give users that unified user experience? What do you think about that? I, I think at the, at the end user perspective, um, he shouldn't bother with that. He should know, okay, I'm using an NFT. I have a pretty rough idea of what it is, but mm -hmm. If you have to explain to him your NFT is on blockchain A, are uh, you sure you want to use wallet E from blockchain B? Anyway, it's too complex for him. Mm -hmm. So it has to be completely seamless, especially when you interact with multiple blockchain. It can be hard to understand. You have one asset wrapped or whatever. So 
if there has to be one winner, um, it will be the one who can provide the most seamless experience um, ever, you know. And it's totally. very hard to do, especially when it comes to NFT. Like I said, there are a lot of moving pieces. Um, let's say you have royalties or you have uh, on-chain and or off-chain metadata. It's a lot of challenges to make this transparent for the end user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine that that, that that is the case for, for many of the projects that are working yeah. on this now is it's almost like a waiting game as you get to figuring out what which protocols are going to continue to grow and which ones might fall off. And yeah, it's it's a challenging thing. But of course, from the most challenging things come the greatest rewards. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a, 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 a personally at the tech level, working on this kind of stuff is very, very exciting because it, it yeah. evolves constantly. And I'm not saying blockchain is old. <laughs> there are still a lot yeah. of stuff to, to learn, but the NFT side of things is, is I think, way more exciting for me at least. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I echo that because working in this space in the, on the tech side also, you know, doing some development, you know, product design, other things, the, the fact of the matter is it's exciting because so often you are forced to relearn things because they're changing so fast and it's very, uh, um, you know, cognitively rewarding, uh, yeah. mentally rewarding, I yeah. would agree. And so another question that I have for you, I guess, fundamentally would be when you see the barriers to adoption for the average person to utilize NFTs in their day-to-day -day life, other than the things we've taught, we've spoken about already, which would be just basic knowledge of what they are and where they are, what are some of the things that projects can do to, to make it easier for, for the average user? Um, for example, I know that at the moment, it's not specifically for the average user, but what one big issue slash cave it is the whole um, metadata storing. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the fact that currently, it's a beautiful technology, but if you have your metadata stored on a centralized API and the server goes offline, your NFT are useless. And so mm -hmm. it defeats completely what blockchain stands for, you know? So <laughs> yeah. it's not for the end user, but it's, it's like one of the most important pieces of the puzzle. If your NFT metadata is not usable, your, the whole concept uh, falls apart. So I guess uh, it's a more general dis discussion and it's about implementing maybe best practice, or I don't know, best best guidelines for projects to store properly um, on-chain, ideally their metadata. But if, if you're using, let's say Ethereum, it's just not feasible. It, you know, it's way too costly to store all metadata on-chain. That's why 99% mm -hmm. of projects don't do it. It's, it's not realistic. At least maybe it will change in ETH2. We don't know, but other blockchain like Phantasma, we can do it. We, we can store everything on chain except the image. Uh, but the metadata itself is on chain uh, because storage works differently. So, anyway, my point is there are things to improve at the user level, but there are also core key components to improve uh, at the NFT level also. Definitely, definitely. And, and when, when we start to move into that, into that space, I think we're going to start to see NFTs also becoming a, an important part of the economies on, on these blockchain networks as well. I mean, you're, we're already starting to see NFTs being used as collateral in DeFi projects, right? Just like you could use a piece of art physically as property as collateral for a loan in the real world. I, I think that is super exciting. Yeah. It's even better but because now you can prove you have a real one and not a fake one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's so crazy because, you know, you hear a lot. I mean, of course, now, because like we mentioned earlier on in, in the show, someone has spent, you know, tens of millions of dollars now on a piece of digital art, which many people think is totally crazy. But the reality is, is that you have, you have a far easier time proving the authenticity of that piece on a, in the digital form than you ever have or ever will in a physical form. Uh, it changes the game for, for the way that, um, you know, fraud happens in the collectibles space. It's a very good point. And, and I think 
people haven't realized that yet you know they, they still think it's it's some kind of internet magic money whatever and <laughs> and they're just slowly starting to understand oh okay so there's an application you can prove it's real yes that's the whole basics of it but they people are just realizing i think yeah we're just starting to get there and you know i'm happy to an extent i'm happy that there's this craze right now around nfts because it's putting it into the mainstream though i will say it's similar to you know, to ICOs, it put a, a kind of a bad rap. It gives the the space a little bit of a bad rap early on. But I mean, that's the cyclical nature of these things. And, and when we come out on the other side, it's better. Yes, but it's also, even if it's not like maybe the best publicity, but it's also a good publicity, you know, because that's yeah. what people learn about it. Like NFTs, just the hashtag NFT has been going trending like crazy since, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks. And it's the first time, you know, if I asked uh, other people one year ago, uh, what do you know about NFT? I mean, like uh, traditional people, not people involved in blockchain. No one knew yeah. about it. And no, even my mother asked me, uh, do you know about NFT? And, you know, it's changing. Yeah, I mean, even during this this art contest, you know, it got my whole family talking about this. You know, it's like my my wife is following and looking at all the art and and explaining it to you know her grandparents and you know her parents and stuff. This is how it moves, and this is how people start to understand it. And so, in in ten years, when people are you know buying their Fortnite skins and weapons and such as NFTs, you know, just an example, not a promise. <laughs> this is where it all started. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just the beginning. But at the same time, people have to understand it's not new either. It's been at mm -hmm. least three to four years the first original NFT started. So mm -hmm. people have time to to build and start uh, building proper protocol or proper standard. You know, it's it's not happening um, overnight. It's it's a long work for from a lot of people in the world. Yeah, agreed. And, and so I guess that's a great place to to sort of tie this in a knot. If if I were to ask you, Vincent, what your you know ideal future state of the NFT space is, what would that be like? If if everything plays out the way that you would imagine, what would that look like? <laughs> I think it's pretty much like you said, uh, pretty much like in Ready Player One, everything in digital or real life would be mixed together and you can prove ownership of whatever whether it's a real life object or or um, a digital one and uh, nft would be basically the key to showing you own something or the key to buy something and it's it's pure um, assets owning you know and instead of owning um, a bill uh, $100 bill, which would be the same as your neighbor, you could you could own uh, your house NFT <laughs> somehow. Yeah. Maybe not in your in your wallet. It's a bit risky, but you could you could just have everything tied to an NFT later. Uh, it's maybe far from being like this, but it, it's getting there, you know. And mm -hmm. it's so much more simple. At the same time, there are caveats, and you need to understand um, the whole key um wallet uh, how it works in blockchain sure right. but at the same time you want to to sell something there's no binary man you don't have to pay three intermediates you don't have to to check uh, is my payment right or not it's blockchain it's immutable you know so it's it brings uh, challenges but at the same time it brings a lot of new opportunities Totally. Well, when we get to that place, I'll throw on the VR goggles and I'll meet you there, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So Vincent, I want to thank you so much for, for taking the time to join me on the show, talking NFTs, Phantasma, the ecosystem at large. Uh, it was definitely a blast. And for anyone that's watching, please do check out Ghost Market. It, it's an amazing you know, piece of, piece of technology that I think everyone should check out. Thank you very much. Thanks for the invite and happy to help. It was a very nice... Uh art contest with a lot of beautiful pieces. Unbelievable. I, I've checked out every single piece and I, I'm super stoked about it. So thanks so much to any, everyone who entered and everyone who watched. Cheers. Have a great one, everyone.